What are all of your names? My name is Teresa Wilson. My name is Margaret Watts. My name is Luke O'Neill. My name is Lucy Cabell. When did you guys join St. Benjamin? I've been, I'm sorry. I've been at St. Benedict since uh, the church first started uh, down on Oklahoma Avenue when we first got this church in this area. So that's just when I first became a member of St. Benedict. I've been here. I, I was at Queen of Peace first, so I have been here about, I guess, 30 years. I've been here for 40 years. I came to this church in 1967. Why did you all join St. Benedict? Because this is where uh, we was able to maintain uh, our faith through uh, uh, confession, holy Eucharist, and through prayer. And uh, it has served us well, my, my family and I. I came because after my girls came out of college, Father Green, the young priest, was here. And they were so taken with him, they persuaded me to come here. So, and I thought they would come, we'd all go to church together. But when he left, they left, and they tried to get me to leave, but I decided to stay here. Well, I came here because I, I was basically a cradle Catholic, born into the Catholic faith, and uh, this is uh, where um, I was going to come long before I, I had anything to do with it, and I'm blessed to be Catholic. Very happy in my faith. I came because it was nearer where I lived than Queen of Peace, which then I think they had boundaries. I think pre, pre, prior to that, they had been boundaries, and I was in the Queen of Peace boundary. Thing. But then it changed uh, when I joined St. Benedict. If I didn't have a car, I would walk over here. <laughs> what was your first impression of St. Benedict? <clears throat> it was well equipped to serve the community. Um, we had a young father at the time, Father Narvel. Yeah. And we have maintained a good priest, a young priest, through up, up until now, where we have Father Rick, which is another young that serves as well, the community, and its right. We had uh, lots of children in the church at one time, and we uh, had made procession and all the things that we always had in our, our Catholic faith. Uh, we don't have very many children now, but that is not what drew me to the church. I was drawn to the church because I always loved the Catholic Church because this is what I knew and this is what I believed and this is what I always wanted to be able to. And my daughter, she graduated from uh, St. Benedict Moon School and she has served the community well since she graduated and went on to further education and become a school teacher and, and, and uh, the Catholic Church. And she's now employed over at St. Francis Xavier on Pennsylvania Avenue. And she still serves the community well. Most of the kids that graduated from St. Benedict Moore, they have done very well. They got a good foundation here. We had a good priest, good sisters uh, that served the community well. And, and the kids, they went on to do well in, in the society. Well, I was very active in Queen of Peace Church. I really loved it. But after I came here, I got into teaching CCD, which I had done there too. And 
I kept teaching. I was very interested, and I learned the children and all about their backgrounds that went here and their families. So, and it's close to my home, so I stayed here. What ministries were you all involved in when you first joined? I was on the CCD. I was also a CCD. I was on the, uh, the building committee here to uh, to that we uh, raise the funds to uh, build this building that we are in today. Okay. I've also uh, been involved in the uh, early beginnings of the building committee, and uh, over the years I've worked in different capacities. I've been a Eucharistic minister. Could, can I do it now because I had a stroke and a handicap. But I still love just being in the atmosphere of going to church. Uh, I've been in CCD uh, uh, teaching and uh, just been involved in general with the church. Anywhere where there are children with the youth, I've been involved with them. Are you guys still involved in these activities? Yes, we are all still very active in different areas that if the church calls upon us, we, we really do get involved. I'm no longer involved in CCD, but I'm a member of the latest charity. I'm a member of the Society. I worked under Father Norval uh, on the parish council on the liturgy committee. I was a member of the liturgy committee. <coughs> involved in short things now, like things they normally have during Lent, the classes. But other than that, I'm just here. What are your fondest memories of this church? Oh, the fondest memory is when we uh, establish the gospel choir. Oh, you stole my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> and all the, all we had great time. I mean, good father novel was instrumental in that. And by the way, my sister was instrumental in bringing the first choir director here, Mrs. Imogen Pierman, which is past the But uh, yes, those was the good days. We had many of sisters, and and father was great. And uh, all of the members, took, we, we we had standing room only, yes. <laughs> standing room only at, at mass. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I think we had two masses at that time. I think we had one at eight and one at four masses. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, we had to leave the church. I was on the church committee then, and I one of my suggestions, since the, the crowd, the church was becoming so crowded that why not, couldn't we have a mass in the hall? Yes. And that's when we moved over to the hall. And it was filled up, they were even sitting on the bleachers. Right. Yeah. Old flowing crowd. And you could if you wanted a seat, you had to get here early. <laughs> well, they used to have so many when I first came, well, they had bingo, but I figured they had everything you want in this church because they had bingo. Then they would have the ladies of charities would have their great sales every year. Oh, yeah. Christmas, they would have great sales. Yeah. They had family picnics and quite a few activities for the young children out of the program. But now, I don't see, I don't see many children. And it seems like the activities have died off. Uh, what keeps you guys here today at St. Benedict? Personally, I love my church. Yeah, it's all about the community. Yeah, yeah we faith. Have, the faith, our faith, and our leadership in the community of the church. Everybody gives and everybody takes care of each other. And as everybody reaches out, so that is great. And we take care of the community also. And really, I never liked, well, I enjoyed it. But the main 
big crowds, you know. We know everybody in the church by name now. Mm -hmm. And when a member is sick, uh, whether they belong to an organization or not, people pitch in. For instance, Ms. Glover is in now from, uh, uh, from the hospital. She spent a few days in the hospital. And any number of members who come to pay food for her, and not members in her organization, but just church in general. So we, I consider ourselves really as a close family. One of the things that I um, thoroughly enjoyed uh, was to work with the uh, sisters, uh, Sister DeSenta, Sister John Francis, and some of the other sisters. Uh, that worked with the children and uh, formulated them so that they would know the faith. And uh, don't see a lot of the children now that, that uh, have grown up because they live in different areas of Washington and other places, but they grew up to be fine young, young people. And there are some still that are still, I see them in church. They have not forgotten what was taught to them to mm -hmm. believe in the faith. And, and I, I'm just thrilled that, that it's been a carryover. This church, uh, you know, we have to, have to do what we have to do to make the church, uh, as, as Father said today. And, and that's what I always think of when I come to church. I'm not here for political reasons. Here to serve God. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Grumble, <laughs> complain, <laughs> but when it comes down to the final thing that we work together to get things done, and I think this is why we have lasted so long. We're small, but we're quality, not quantity. Quality, <laughs> not quantity. <clears throat> My fondest memory, I quite a few. Uh, to chase the bedroom call late at night, cleaning up. <laughs> 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 to the best of all, you know, all the fundraisers that we had, the Holy Name Men, the Need the Marsh, to, for fellowship and for making money at the same time so we can survive. Uh, to crab feasts. Same better than more people as a whole love to eat. And whether, whether it's breakfast or whatever, we would come and share and fellowship. Uh, even we do it on a small scale now, but back then we did it on a very large scale, on a regular basis. We had various, we sort of moved the fundraisers into a thing where we had church membership in the neighborhood, uh, feast of 10 tables. Uh, on and on, we had, uh, and then craft feasts and some other things. We had these things throughout the year, and they would bring old members, new members back, and do the fellowship, and we eat good. <laughs> so, of all the things that I've enjoyed, reading and, and, and working hard for the Holy Name and the ushers and all the other things I do, uh, eating and fellowship is, is one of the things I like doing. Um, if we could get back to that, that would be good. All right, thank you. May you all tell us your names and the organizations you belong to? Mildred Taylor, Nellie Williams, Evelyn Quanda Ratley, John A. Beasley, Senior. I belong to the Sodality, Lazy Charity, the Usher Board, and the Amelia Bitches Minister. I belong to the Sodality and the Environmental Art. I belong to the Gospel Choir. 
I belong to the Sodality, the Ladies of Charity. I'm a Eucharistic minister. I'm a claim of the word, and I'm a sacristan for this church. Um, currently, <clears throat> I'm a member of the Ordained Society of St. Benedict, past president of Ushers, St. Benedict Moore Ushers. Also, I'm at the um, St. Vincent Paul Society as, as president. Also, I volunteer uh, as a coordinator for the food program for the St. Vincent Paul. Why did you all join St. Benedict? Well, I joined when the I think when they made the cornerstone, I was here when they built the church to begin with. I did not belong, my husband did, and uh, he was quite active. I did not become a convert until 1953, then I joined the church at that time. But in the meantime, I was still coming to Mass with him. Hey, I'm going to be for 13 years. I believe that came in 1980. Um, I relocated from St. Martin's and I joined in, I think it was 2000. I am one of the founding members of St. Benedict the Moore Church. Um, Father Thomas E. Burke, who is the founding priest for this church, was making a survey and going through the community to find out how many Catholics were in this area so that it, if it was feasible to build a church here. And so he was ringing the doorbell and uh, my uh, mother answered the door and he said why he was in the community. And she said, well, come on in, you look kind of hot <laughs> because he had been going from door to door taking this survey. And uh, so every day from then on, he would stop at our house and have lunch until the survey was made. Originally, uh, we had land that was over on Rosedale Street. And um, then the Archdiocese bought the land that the church is on at this present time. Uh, we had the land, but we had no building. And this is when we went to um, Guam Hall. These were the army uh, uh, buildings, <clears throat> temporary buildings on the surface grounds here on Oklahoma Avenue. And um, the church was built in 1946. And uh, my husband and I, Thaddeus Ratley, were the first wedding by Father Thomas D. Burke. We were married in June 1946. And since we did not have a church, our miniature choir that sang in the uh, temporary buildings and the church members all went over to St. Cyprian's Catholic Church and Father Burke married us and that was June 28, 1947, which meant we still had not built this church. So this is how I uh, long that I have been uh, a member of this church. <coughs> Uh, I guess I started out many years ago when I was a little boy, and I was <clears throat> going to St. Vincent Paul. From there, I sort of missed church for a while. As I got older, I went back to St. Vincent Paul uh, because I lived in the Southwest. Eventually, I ended up uh, service, married, and attended St. John's 
on Saudi roads. Uh, I stayed there for a period of time with my two sons uh, attended school and, and graduated. And that's when I heard about this wonderful uh, church over in the southeast, in the southwest, in um, the northeast. I would say this to Paul that they were really moving and they were working and they were, it sounded like something good to join. So I came <clears throat> one Sunday and they were doing service in the, uh, in, this, in the Imperial Room. And I said, man. From that point on, I got involved because the gentleman of the church uh, enrolled me in the, as an usher and everything else they could find. <laughs> and then I just kept going from there. I've always been involved in working um, with various organizations. <clears throat> uh, that was, I joined the church actually in the 70s. Um, I met my wife here and we became married. Uh, um, 78. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and from that point on, I've been here working and involved myself in all the community activities of the church and uh, for whatever that was possible from, from reading on Sundays to uh, ushering and God bless the Holy Name Society and all the other things that it involves. We uh, started doing some, we ran awards, that was back in the 80s. Uh, we had awards in the kitchen for some participation. And then we got involved uh, through the courtesy of John White, through the uh, food program, giving out food to the neighborhood, the Golden Age, and uh, other aspects of the community. Uh, I still do some ushering when they let me. Uh, I'm still the Holy Name member. Other than that, I read on the Sundays and, and, uh, and I give out food on Mondays and Wednesdays and serve. Our church serves uh, once a month, giving out food to about three or four hundred people. That's some. Uh, that's what I'm doing now. What were your first impressions of this church? Well, I came at the beginning and I had no way else to go. So I just stayed because it was filled up after the gospel choir came in. The church was built up to the point that you just stayed and it became my home. As far as my For me, my daughter was a member here, and I would always come with her, and it would just be packed with people. People would, would come from faraway places, far as uh, uh, Alaska, and I said, wow, this must be a great place, and uh, so I uh, decided that I would like to become a member of this, this church. And it was a structured church. And I liked it there. And, and I was having health problems with walking. And uh, it didn't have a lot of steps, so it was easy for me to get in and out. I started out um, when I moved over to uh, 18th Street. I used to come to this Saturday nights. But then um, I heard the uh, <coughs> children's choir on Sunday. I started coming on Sundays and, uh, at the 9 o'clock mass. And the kids would say, So 
then uh, later on, I went to uh, one of the, the, the 10 o'clock, like which, uh, and that particular Sunday, I heard uh, Robert sang a, a song, and it was saying something. <laughs> so anyway, I uh, decided that I wanted to get back into the choir, so I went to the director and said to just be out on Wednesday evening we have a choir rehearsal. And then I went from there. And then it was such warmth and love and everyone treated me like you know, a family member. <laughs> and those that, is, that are still here is still the same. So. That's why I come, uh, I'll say, a thousand miles across the bridge. <laughs> because I feel at home. Well, my first impression of this church is that it's open and something for everyone. Uh, years ago, we did not have the uh, uh, CCD classes. We had one building, and it was called a multi-purpose building. During the evenings and on Saturdays, we had uh, games and activities for the youth. And then the altar was reversed, and on Sundays, we had mass in the same building. Um, Frances Queen, one of the original founding members and her mother, was the Girl Scout leader, and I was a Girl Scout leader. My husband Thaddeus Radley was the Cub Master for the uh, Cub Scouts. And um, we had uh, youth groups. I had suggested that we name the team the Benedictines, since we were St. Benedict the Moor, and our colors were green and white, and we competed in all kinds of activities all over the archdiocese and won trophies. And all the trophies were in a cabin and a case out in the lobby of the church. And everyone was so proud that we had won all of these trophies. And then on one particular weekend, when we came here, the front door had been broken into and all the trophies stolen. So um, this sort of put a damper on things, but we never gave up. And we continued with our youth programs. And um, another thing, the ladies of the church were divided into 10 groups. We had 10 leaders. My mother, Ms. Helen Quanda, was one of the leaders. Ms. Martha Zilch, Ms. Jeanette Flynn, Mrs. Uh, Emma Mahoney. Uh, I could go on and on and on, but there were 10 ladies. And all the ladies of the church were divided so that you would under one of these bands. So everyone was involved. And at that time, we um, did all the cooking in the kitchen, which is now where count money and, and part of the uh, unisex bathroom is, but you should go right through that way to the back, and that was the kitchen. And when you would come to Sunday Mass, you would smell all this good food <laughs> that the ladies have cooked, because we sold dinners, we had breakfast afterwards, uh, we did everything to raise money, and the youth of the church were very active at that time. So. It was like that then, <coughs> 62 years ago that I had been here, and it's like that now, in 19, uh, 2012, from 1946 to 
question was again, please. Um, what was your first impression of St. Benedict? My first impression of St. Benedict, I thought it was the wrong crowd. I thought it went to workers. <laughs> Mr. Lee and so many of the men, um, so many grabbing me for ushering service, um, cleanup service. Um, just joined the Holy Name Society, you know, and I was just <clears throat> still a young man, young man in the woods, so I volunteered and went along with them. I've been working ever since. It's a good church, but they were getting things done, and Mr. Radley and Mrs. Mr. Lee and all the gentlemen of the Holy Name at that time, uh, all three, they reminded me what they used to do in the church and all the things they used to do and how they finished with a cabaret and changed it around and clean it up and get ready for church in the morning. And so you, you got it easier now. You got a big room and all this, blah, blah, blah. But I still work just as hard. <laughs> anyway, that's what I came for to join, to be part of something, growing and working, then I'm still here. What are your fondest memories at St. Benedict Memorial? I really don't know, except that I referred to the choir. That was really fantastic as far as it goes. And of course, the May Day. I look forward to the May Day with the little children all dressed in white and everything. That would be quite a thing to be involved in. And uh, well, just coming to church every uh, I used to come every day, but I can't do that now. Uh, it's just peaceful and quiet, and that's what I need. My fondest memory was uh, when Father Fats was here. One Sunday he came to me and asked me how would I like to go to Lord France mm -hmm. for a week. And I was just ecstatic. And I took that trip. It's a trip I'll never, never forget. It was just amazing. I I got in that pool that they had, and I saw so many miracle things that happened while I was there. I've gone in the gift shop, and people just walk up to me and give me envelopes with money in it. Uh, everything that I bought while I was on the trip I didn't pay for a thing. They paid for everything, even in the gift shop. Mm -hmm. So it was just amazing. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My favorite, well, I have many memories of, of this church, working with the young people, working with the youth. Um, when Sister Charlotte uh, was principal of St. Benedict the Moore School, and I was honored to, uh, to be asked to do a substitute teaching in the school, but since I was a teacher myself in the D.C. public schools and retired as supervisor of teachers, I was very honored um, to work with St. Benedict the Moore uh, School at that time. Um, another really fond memory is the um, installation of Father William L. Norville as the pastor of St. Benedict the Moore Church. Mm -hmm. We were so honored. It was written up in all of the local papers, newspapers, the Afro, the Pittsburgh Courier, Jet, Ebony Magazine, Life Magazine, you name it, because this was the first time that an African American had been appointed pastor of a church. 
and especially here in Washington, D.C. And um, I was honored to, by Father to uh, ask me to be one of the speakers on his program. And um, there were priests from all over the archdiocese, from out of town. Um, not only was St. Benedict the Law Choir uh, sang, but there were visiting choirs. Uh, the Oblate Sisters, the uh, um, <coughs> Sisters of the Sacred Heart, or you name it. And you would have thought that uh, the President of the United States was here at St. Benedict the Law Church because you couldn't get near it, uh, cars, and they had the police that had uh, built off all the streets around here. and, and, and we, it, it was just a pleasure, and so we were so blessed. Uh, we called Father Norvell the Black Shepherd, and, and on that Sunday, it, uh, the gospel reading was about the shepherd, the, you know, who said, uh, you are my people and I will watch over you, and, and uh, so everything just sort of fit in, and uh, along with lots of other memories working with um, all the organizations. One thing about this church, even today, everyone works together. May you all tell us your names and the organizations you belong to? Uh, my name is uh, Ben McCall. Benjamin is my real name, but everybody here calls me uh, Benny. And uh, I belong to the Knights of Columbus, I belong to the American League. And I'm Thelma exactly. Anderson, and I was a member and a driver for the prison ministry and the um, something else. Okay. Anyway, oh, I know <laughs> the bingo and uh, and the cabaret. <laughs> My name is Bill Fletcher, and I belong to Holy Land, and uh, also work at Bingo and Asha. Uh, I was working in the church during the time when I was in the community. Bernice Clark, and I belong to the Gospel Choir, and the St. Vincent de Paul Society, the Sodality, and I was a member of the Education Committee when they had a committee. Uh, when did you guys join St. Benedict? Well, uh, I, I joined uh, St. Benedict in 1946 when it was first built. And uh, 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 before then, I was I was I was going to uh, uh, the temporary building over at, over in the, in the uh, uh, RFK Stadium Park because uh, uh, at first uh, 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 during the war that was that was a, a rat's barracks over there, and uh, 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 after everything died down, uh, 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 they started a, 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 a mass over there on Sundays and. And, and, and some was it been during the week, and uh, 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 I joined there. I came from uh, 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 from uh, uh, the whole whole team of parish in Northwest, and I, and I moved uh, here in the neighborhood, the 21st Street. So uh, well, we had to travel from 21st Street all the way up to New Jersey Avenue and, and uh, uh, New York Avenue to go to church on Sunday morning. And I, I decided to move my membership over to Guam Hall, and I came in uh, the the uh, church uh, 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 right after it, it, it was built. And uh, then um, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, we uh, I worked with the first census of, of, of Catholic people around in the area, and um, uh, we, we had uh, in, in the Holy Name Society. Well, well, I was already in the Holy Name Society to come forward to be my And after, after the, uh, after, after they started the Holy, uh, started the, uh, 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 Holy Name Society here, we had about 15 or 20 uh, men 
uh, were there. And uh, it was just the, the, the uh, church then, you know, just one building. Now, all this area was, 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 was farmland, you know, it, 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 it was just grass. And uh, uh, the Holy Name men used to get together on Saturdays and in the summertime and come down and cut the grass all over the place. I uh, came to St. Benedict in 1947. My family was Baptist, but my friends were Catholic. So I felt I needed to be with my friends since they were having such a good time down here. Because <laughs> it was a neighborhood church, and I lived, all, I lived on 19th Street, and all my friends off 19th Street and Bennett Place were all members down here. And, uh, at the time, Father Burke used to drive to Baltimore every Sunday morning to the uh, Sisters of Providence uh, mother house in Baltimore to bring the uh, nuns over for uh, C CCD class or or uh, or or, uh, or Sunday school. And so, uh, at, at the time, uh, we used to go to Sunday school, but when we got to be teenagers, we felt that we were too too grown for Sunday school. And we used to hide under the staircase in the dormitory over at the, where we, they were holding service and, and stayed until Father Burke got out and then we would come out of hiding until he found out what we were doing. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then he set up a Bible history class for us that was really a nice class. But we used to have a good time over at that, uh, over at the, uh, at that, uh, at the dormitory. The dormitory was for uh, young ladies who came to Washington to work in the government during the war. And uh, at the time we were in the in the uh, dormitory before communion, Father Burke had someone count to see how many people were going to communion. Uh, so he would only bless so much of the uh, host. And all of, after, after a while, you know, the late comes would come in, want to go to communion, Father Burke would start breaking the host. And so you might get a little piece about that big. <laughs> <laughs> because he was stretching it. And uh, uh, Father Burke and the, uh, the priests who would come here were really good. Because we and had, we really had the use in, uh, in mind because we used to ride our bicycles up to the Joe's Bikes Heights up on, on 12th Street. We used to ride from here all the way up there and visit Father Burke. And he never turned us down, he always let us in. <laughs> so uh, we, we enjoyed doing that. I don't recall when the church was built, but I, uh, and uh, but I know when the, after the church was built, there was a, we had mass on Sunday, a revolving altar. We had mass on Sunday and bingo on Friday. And uh, I was married in the church uh, in 55. <laughs> <laughs> and when I was baptized, it did not have a baptismal fountain. So Father Burke carried us to Holy Redeemer, where he did the baptism. And also, we did confirmation in another church. I don't recall which one it was. But I know I did and the second, I did First Holy Communion here. But the confirmation and baptism was done in another church. So if I ever have to have those records, I don't know where I would look to find them. But anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, St. Cyprian. St. No, it wasn't St. Yeah, but, um, and I, I belong, they have a small choir that used to sing from the balcony in Latin. They used to sing in Latin from that little balcony that's in the church now. But uh, I don't know if you knew what we were singing. Or I can't even remember who, who the director was, but there was a choir, a small choir that sang from that balcony. Well, I joined the church in the 60s, and uh, my daughter was in CCD, and as I said, the Lancasters helped me to raise my daughter. 
she saw a uh, Charleston one day on the corner, Maryland Avenue, crying her heart out. So she called me at, at the work and said, Mom, I helped this girl to, to find her way home. And I said, what? And she said, yeah, it's a little girl standing on the corner crying. And this car kept circling. And uh, Johnson couldn't find her way home. And even though she was a member of Charles Young, she couldn't find her way home. So my daughter said, I've seen her. So I took her home. I said, that's very good. And I got, got to meet uh, Ms. Lancaster. And we became friends. And she thanked me so much for letting me to help my child. But um, then my daughter was killed. And uh, I started coming to church for a while. And Father Norval came over and talked to me. And uh, kind of got myself together. And by that time, I had married a second time. And uh, my husband and I started coming here. So to give me something to do, uh, George and I would drive for the uh, prison ministry. And that was so interesting. They taught us so many things, those prisoners. They taught us about carrying big pack of books. They told us to leave the pack of books at home. So you ain't got enough money to put some bills anyway, so leave them at home. And I said, why? He said, because if we need a drink or a fix, and we don't have any money, and we see you out there at 6, 7 o'clock in the morning at the bus stop, we look and we see that pocketbook, we're going to take it from you. There's no point in saying, well, there's nothing in it. See, because we don't know that. So from that day on, I only bring a black book to the church on Sunday. Other than that, I care no longer. And um, I remember this song, uh, Chuck Bear, uh, Bus Canoes. They had a cabaret there one night. And Father and I Sydney and me to, uh, to work with the cabaret. And I didn't really know what drugs were or the smell because I didn't have any children around me as such. But I couldn't understand why I was so giddy. Oh, I was so happy that night I didn't know what to do. And the next day, Father had a headache. And we all had a headache. And Father said, I'm going to tell you this before I start service. There won't be no more busting loose in here. <laughs> <laughs> he said those guys with girls with women too. They were smoking and drinking everything, but they most of that smoking. And that's when I really found out about drugs. But um, I stayed at St. Benedict because because I'm around the corner from St. Anthony's. But uh, I enjoyed St. Benedict. Because it's it's like a home. We all don't speak to each other every Sunday. Sometimes we're busy doing things. But when somebody knows that you're ill, somebody will come to see you. Somebody will come to your house, go to the hospital, but somebody will call or come. And I just feel comfortable here. I really do. I feel comfortable staying up talking to the priest. I feel comfortable talking to the members. And Benny, I thought Benny was sitting his brother. He would be at the house so much. <laughs> I, I, I said, you sure you two are brother? You sure you're not from New Orleans? But, um, but um, basically, um, it's a good church. We've seen them come, and we've seen them go. And now I'd like for them to come back. Because we do have a lot of members we promise. And uh, I like to see them come back. I hope you don't mind me with my hands up under my chin, but I talk better because <laughs> I had make sure. So. I, I had a break in, in my membership here at St. Sunday when I had children because I lived up off of uh, Eastern Avenue and it was kind of hard to get everybody over here for. First Holy Communion, CCD classes, and everything. So I carried them up to St. John the Baptist. They are up on uh, Sergeant Road. 
So after they um, finished their, all their sacraments, I started looking, going to St. Saint, Saint Anthony's, and I went to some, some other uh, home name. I it just didn't feel at home. And somebody told me, said, you ought to go back down to St. Benedict. They've got this little lady who brings the choir in there every morning and said, you ought to see her. I said, <laughs> I said, okay. So I came down here and I saw that little lady. I knew that little lady and her family. <laughs> I said, huh? Morita. The other said, Morita, come in. <laughs> it's Lancaster. And so uh, from then on, I, after I uh, service was over, I went back over my old to the directory and signed up again. I said, because I'm back home, you know, and, and uh, my family enjoyed it, uh, coming back. And the choir, I, and then I finally, I joined the choir game, and the choir has toured, done southern tours with California, we've been to Hawaii, and we used to do concerts, sometimes we would do two concerts a month. We had 70-some members, huge choir. And we would do, do concerts. We were always invited out to do something. We go to Baltimore to sing. We would go all all places in, in the area to sing, and out of uh, out of town. So um, I'm still in the choir, and we're not touring to Hawaii anymore. But it was fun. <laughs> Well, actually, uh, my 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 whole family was, uh, 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 as far as I know, back was born Catholic, and uh, 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 my my brother, my youngest brother, he's, he's now passed, but he's he's the first uh, 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 a priest to be ordained from Holy Redeemer Church. And, uh, with, 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 and when I when I when I first come in into this church. I was the only one in the family that was in, and then uh, I brought my older sister in. I brought my uh, uh, immediate sister in, and I brought my youngest sister in. And she sang in the choir uh, 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 just after Father Norvell came in. And I have I have worked with just about uh, uh, well, I wouldn't say every every priest, but uh, 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 I worked with most of them. Until uh, when uh, 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 we were Father Father Healy, Father Healy came out. I, I I stayed here, and 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 I worked behind the scenes with with with, with all of the uh, 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 managers of the hall from from uh, uh, from um, the, the first manager when we first built these two buildings. Was uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, what's his name? I, I can't. I can't think. I think of his name. Uh, Mallory. Mallory. Yeah, Mr. Mallory. Okay. Well, after Mr. Mallory well, left out, uh, well, well, I worked along with him. Just nothing but volunteer work. I done. I done everything. I done all the painting, uh, almost all the painting, and 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 and, and all of uh, uh, all the repairs and everything, even. Haul, haul the priests around to buy their personal things and all that kind of thing because I was, I was right on with them. Every, every day I was here. Every day that I, 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 I had a chance to come in. And when, when, when Father Healy came in, he asked me, uh, 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 I, I had just retired from, from, from my regular job. And he, he asked me, did I, did I want to take over the management of the, of the, of the complex, you know? And well, I thought about it. I said, well, you know, I mean, the, it's not much money, but heck, I mean, the, the, uh, 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 I, I do, uh, uh, I, I know all about the complex and so forth. So, so I wanted to play. So then uh, 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 there was a, there was a lot of parishioners that thought that I was I was Mr. St. Benedict because I paid a great big rent of key to everything around me. And, 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 and for a while, there were few people that were that were that were that were, were sort of jealous of me because I got all these keys, you know. <laughs> so then uh, 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 we moved the bingo or, 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 or over here in the hall because we we, we had such a big uh, a gathering uh, uh, at mass and at bingo and so forth. Well, heck, I mean, we had a bigger place. Uh, uh, that was that was 
uh, before healing, that was when uh, 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 Father Nett came in. Uh, uh, Father Nett wasn't a real preacher, but he knew how to go out and get <laughs> other people, you know, to bring, to bring them in and fill this all up. <laughs> so then uh, 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 I, was, I was working bingo one night, and, and uh, 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 the bingo chairman had passed. And uh, it, 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 you know, after after bingo, we never went outside to get anybody to help to clean up. I mean, the, 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 the bingo workers cleaned up, and then we have a regular little collation for them, and give them chicken wings and all that kind of business, and send them on home. That was, that, that was for helping to clean up. So, so father, father, and then says, well, "Hey, Benny, you know what I think? <laughs> you, you are, you, 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 you are a pretty good guy. We're gonna." Uh, I, I'm going to appoint you as a bingo chairman. And I mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't want the job. He said, oh, yeah, you'll be running for it. After I got that job, then I had to take care of all the weird receptions, all the, all the, all the, all the, uh, all, 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 bingo, all the, all the parties, all the, all the, see, because we, we, we stayed up until 3 o'clock in the morning. And some 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 Sunday mornings I'd, I'd be in here cleaning up and everybody's going to church. And 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 uh, oh, well, I, I wasn't getting paid. I mean, all that, that was volunteer work. But the only time I got paid was when Father Healy uh, came in and he and he and he put the put the put the church business on on computer. And he asked me did I want the job? And he he he, he quoted a oh 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 oh. oh. Oh, oh, salary took it. <laughs> I really didn't want it because I was working another job. I was running newspapers, you know, uh, 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 early morning newspapers. So I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm down here working anyhow. I might as well take it. You know, that makes me money. And uh, 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 I, 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 I signed up with the, with the archdiocese, and I stayed here for ten years. Oh, 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 working. Working this whole complex, I, I took care of the school, I, I took care of the, the uh, 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 church, I, I cleaned the church, the, 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 the uh, uh, living quarters, I, I, I done repairs in the living quarters, and I doubt if there's any other male person in, in, this, in this congregation now that has ever been up in the ceiling. Of the of the imperial, <laughs> and I used to be up there every month changing those lights and washing all all the stuff. I done all the painting, and uh, 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 before before uh, 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 Healy hired me, when Father uh, 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 no, no, not Father in there, uh, uh, the black piece, uh, uh, well, Father Norwell was here, and school was out. So he asked me. He says, he says, Benny, can you get can you get some somebody to to uh, uh, contract it to paint the school? Uh, I said, hey, I, I do that kind of work. You know, I'll paint the school because I had three guys working for me. You know, you know uh, 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 outside job. You know, and I hired those guys, and we we, we went in and I uh, uh, we painted the whole school from 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 second floor all the way down. And, and, and uh, of course, I had to charge him, but I mean, I've got the papers home now. If anybody wants to look at them, I mean, I mean it's, 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 it's just like slave labor. But we got the whole place painted. And, 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 and uh, of course, the sad thing about it is that uh, uh, when, when, uh, when uh, Father Hall came in, uh, 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 each priest that comes in, he has, he, he has a certain way of running things. They changed all kinds of stuff. Uh, when he came in, he, 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 he wanted to buy new furniture. Well, before he came in, when, when, uh, 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 when the other priest uh, uh, came in, he didn't, like the, he didn't like the bed room and the living room and everything because he was painted dark blue. And he said, he asked me, what, what can I do? I said, well, I mean, I'll bring the guys in and we can panel it. We panel the living room, the sitting room and uh, 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 one bedroom. Put carpet in, everything. 
and, 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 and fix it up. Then, then uh, 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 I thought as you all have been upstairs in the living quarters, back in the storage room. You know, as you go back in the storage room, there's a lot of uh, space back there. And uh, 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 we, we had to go back in there. And, uh, I, I had two young boys working, working for me in uh, 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 what I used to call the ghost crew that, that comes to work at 2.30 in the morning and clean up the place and get it, get, get it, get it set up for, for, for Sunday morning mass. And that was, that was all night job. Keeping it from and so, I mean, I, 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 I've had a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I, I've spent nights down here and everything else. All right, then. Well, uh, I do want to say thank you. Got into 1956. And uh, uh, I had an idea, Mr. King and Mr. Gomer, Mr. Radley, you know, I knew them. Yeah, yeah, and, and after that, you know, the school was opening up, which I had uh, two boys at the time. And they joined the St. Benedict School. And uh, after, after school, um, you know, I, I joined the Holy Name Society, which I had, became the vice president of the Holy Name Society back then. And uh, also, then, uh, had Three girls after that, so they graduated from St. Mary too. And uh, and, uh, at the time, uh, uh, St. Mary Hall opened up, and I, I was a bartender for years and for the wedding, uh, wedding anniversary, and function at night, Saturday. And we also had a family club called the St. Uh, and family club, which we had cabarets and things for eight years here. And of um, course, at the time I was working, I used to sell about a thousand dollars worth of tickets a year uh, for the furniture. And uh, It's <laughs> okay. So, but that's all I can think of it now. <laughs> and I did a lot of work when I was in St. Benedict Church. I uh, found the back room in the church, and I also fit uh, in the house, fit in from upstairs, found the upstairs, and painted the kitchen and the you know, prayer room. And, uh, also, I used to repair the parquet floor that, you know, through the week before the sun and mass. And uh, that's about all I can think of right now that I did. Do. All right. I think maybe we could give a few kudos to some of the people who are not here now, like the Darties. The Darties who worked very hard. The Mahomes. Uh, and, um, you don't have to know any. Brother White. Brother White. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, White didn't do very much oh, 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 maintenance work, but he 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 ran the ran the food bank to the to, to the hill. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, he he he, he supplied everybody. And we had George here, you know, uh, do everything. Yeah. George, George, I can't think of George next. So we have quite a few people. George Cole. George Cole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. George Cole used to drive a bus. Right. So we should give some kudos. Those of you remember, those of you Quite a few. Contributed Yeah. Miss Lancaster. Oh, yes. Miss Lancaster was here from day one for everything and anything. Don't forget the little shorty, what's her name? Oh, Miss Tom. Miss Ty. Miss Ty. Mrs. Queen. Mrs. Queen. was what, 90? She was 90 plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Miss Queen. She was 93 because I'm 92 myself. Okay, and we had Anne Hallway. 
Uh, so Miss Tyne said she would be here. Uh, she would either go first or St. Benedict. But uh, one of the other ones. But it's been a nice church. Then we got some good cooks here. Like Mr. Reed. Like Mr. Reed. And the people. We have some good cooks here. So we uh, like to read when I see their names up there cooking. <laughs> and now we have the Shari uh, police, and uh, so it's it's coming around. We're going to build up again, I believe. But if you see that 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 golden plaque out there in 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 the foyer, everybody's name on there, donated a uh, 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 thousand dollars or more to get this complex built. There's that there's some of them that's not on it. Mm -hmm. And if you and if you notice uh, now, a uh, George Cole was the was, 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 was the senior pickup driver. He would be on a bus, and, and he used to go around and pick up the seniors. And then they didn't put his name on it, and, and, and he got a black or a piece of something I don't know, and carved his own name. <laughs> he he <laughs> stand up on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, thanks. Okay. Yeah. chairperson and, and currently I am the chairperson of the Apostolic Life Committee. I'm also an usher. I serve all funerals and with passes. Um, my name is Anita Whitehurst and I've been a member of St. Benedict since 1985. I have not registered in any of the organization here at St. Benedict. I joined St. Benedict. I left St. I came to St. Benedict after the Incarnation Church in Northeast Washington because of the senior choir. My daughter was on the choir here and I came over here with her and I liked the choir and the service because deep down I, I, my heart was Baptist and I was born in the Baptist Church in North Carolina for years and when I moved to Washington I married into a Catholic family and uh, I came to St. Benedict. I went to Incarnation Church and my children were brought up in the Catholic Church and Catholic School. So that, that was the reason I transferred to St. Uh, Benedict because it, I like the service here, but I'm not active in any of the organizations here. Okay. I'm Lois Williams and I have been a member since about 46, I believe, when the church was in the dormitory. And I belong to the Sadalfield. Oh. Honey, you finished? Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dorothy Everly. Uh, I moved over here in 1988. I was already in a Sadality 
at St. Vincent de Paul. And when I came here that, that year, I'm the family that asked me, caught me in church, and she asked me, did I want to be in the sodality? So I was smiling all over myself, you know, because I knew what I was. But I told her, I said, I'm already in it. She said, well, good. She said, well, you still can be with us when we bring new people in. So I did fine. And I have worked with the uh, sodality from then on. I was working as a hospitality program in here with the sodality. I worked at least. Well, I'm going to be nice. I'm going to say 18, but 18 or 19 years serving on the Fidelity uh, Hospitality Program, which I like very well. I think there was two people that headed the Fidelity in here. Uh, Marvel Comax and Alan Kim Hilton. Before Marvel Comax, the head of the sodality. Was Lucille Pastel? Yes. Well, Lucille Pastel. And before I did all of this, I actually worked with the Sunday School Children, which was um, Miss Helen, I forgot her name. Oh, uh, and another Miss And, and, uh, I had a with the Sunday school children, and I really did enjoy it because I have always worked with children, and so many of the children that I met uh, was coming here to Sunday school, was going to Blow Elementary School, and that's where I worked for five years. So really, truly, I've been all within the community of meetings that we have in the neighborhood. I went to them and uh, really truly I have had a nice time here. I also noticed that before I came here, this church was this church was uh, having so many nice things that if I had known before I probably would have left St. Vincent and come here to be with this one. Because it's it's you know you feel so good when you're happy. And that's the way I was. I had five children. Um, I was baptized in La Plata, Maryland, St. Mer St. Uh, Sacred Heart. I made my first Holy Communion at St. Vincent de Paul, and I was confirmed at St. Vincent de Paul. I also, uh, my marriage was done at St. Vincent de Paul. So I have been with the Catholic Church. Oh, um, right. When did you guys join the same thing? When did we join what? St. Benedict the Lord. I don't know. I think they asked you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, I just can tell you. When I joined, I started coming to St. Benedict. 1952. Um, what are your fondest memories of St. Benedict the Moor?
Well, oh. Mom Marks, like Count Basie and Pearl Hines, mm. we used to have a good time. Yeah. <laughs> mm. See, that's what I miss so much. But um, when I joined the Sadaka, actually, the St. Louis Depot, and that was in 1960, like I said, and then when I came here in uh, 1988, I picked up again. Well, I, when I joined uh, the church, I was a young bride, and after I had my children, I decided that I should um, join one of the organizations in the church, and I chose to sit down because the ladies were very nice. They were very receptive and reverent, and I was well received uh, in Sodality, and I have been there ever since, and I have worked in just about all the organizations in Sodality, and I am committed to the Sodality. She did on go here. Trying to get into the St. Benedict Memorial got its name. Ms. Williams? Yes, I, I uh, um, Archbishop Curley decided that he would like to have that name for St. Benedict Memorial. Do you know why he decided that? Well, I guess because it was a black community. Mm -hmm. And he was a black man. Okay, hold it one yes. sec. Hold it one sec. Yes, you can. I, I forgot the main thing that I did for 20 some years or more was to work bingo. Every Friday night I worked bingo. I couldn't go out with my friends because I had to work bingo. <laughs> <laughs> I loved working bingo. But then after a fashion, you find something else to do or turn it over to somebody else. And that's what happened. I, after all of those years, I stopped working bingo and turned it over to the younger people to work. Okay, well, I, you finished? Yes. I had, I had a, a, a third Friday night that I worked two for the bingo. And like I say, that was 20 some years. Because it was right after that, I came to this church up. 
just fell right in. And I honestly, that's the only thing I'm going to tell you that really kept me going. Because when I was here doing things like that, uh, so many of my friends had died, and I didn't really have nobody hardly to, you know, go out. Like they had social things here years, years ago before I came. I wish they had some tenure because it means a whole lot. When you get at least once a month or uh, every two months to uh, enjoy yourself with other people. And when I became into sodality, it, it was good because I met a lot of associate friends. I did just go into church. For some reason, when I was in the Catholic church, uh, we'd go to church and we'd come out and we'd say bye, you know. But when you're in something like this, you can communicate a little bit better. What, what keeps you all here at St. Benedict or more? What'd you say? What keeps you all here at St. Benedict or more today? Love the folks. Okay. I'm here. I'm here because uh, I'm in the neighborhood and I like this parish. I like a small parish, and I, uh, like I said, I, my children grew up here in the parish. They went to the school here, and I'm still here. <laughs> I like it all. That's well, probably one reason too, because of family. My daughter and now I have a grandson who attends. You know when you. When um, I first came into this Paris, it was absolutely no way you could sit around and do anything, just come to church and then leave. We had one person down here, we called her the Duberator. Everybody remember the Duberator? Margaret Helms? She will tell you quick, fast, and in a hurry, you will do this and you will do that. That was Margaret. That was We also had one who they called the general. <laughs> and she kept everything rolling too from father on down. And she passed in a couple of months ago. Who was that? Lilda Brown. Anything that you want to share other from your heart? Uh, as to how we can just continue the legacy and the foundation that you have built here at St. Benedict? Well, I think if the young, if we do the things older provisions do, what God asks us to do, and show the example, the younger people I think will get out and follow. Okay, thanks. We thank you so much for taking this time and sharing with us. And this is um, going to be very important as we pull the program together, both the, um, the program, the day of the Mass, and also the written.